There's growing outrage this morning after four men convicted of kidnapping and murdering a U.S. journalist in the Middle East are set free. A high court in Pakistan ordered the release of Daniel Pearl's killers last week. The Wall Street Journal reporter was kidnapped while investigating Islamist militants in Pakistan 18 years ago. He was beheaded some weeks later. Now Pearl's parents are petitioning the Pakistani Supreme Court in order to overturn the ruling that freed those men. Joining us now is Thane Rosenbaum, a Middle East analyst and distinguished university professor at Toro College. He's also the author of this book here, Saving Free Speech from Itself. Thane joins us now live on the program. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, you know, you wrote about this in your latest column in the Jewish Journal, where you questioned why the Pakistan government did not view this as a capital crime worth of even a life sentence. What did you find in your research? Well, look, Emma, it's very important to remember, this is not even murder. This is barbarism. Really, there isn't any other word for it. We have become inured and desensitized that Islamists cut off heads. Um, and th this should provoke the appropriate amount of moral outrage uh, that this happens in certain societies. An American citizen was, was beheaded. He was lured into a trap in Pakistan, in, Pakistan, uh, in connection with his investigation of al-Qaeda at the time. Uh, it was even so uh, despicable, Emma. He was lured by email because his, his daughter uh, had not yet been born. And the terrorist and he were sharing emails about how the terrorist, who he thought was just a source, also was about to be an expected father. He would have never gone to Karachi had he not been lured. So the question is, is there, is there justice for Americans, uh, or and certainly one who in this instance was killed in part because he was Jewish? Remember, Emma, this is also the country that sheltered bin Laden, hiding in plain sight. It's also the country that is scheduled to receive a $25 million aid package in this most recent spending bill uh, for democracy and gender programs. I don't even know what that means, but they should spend it at least on their judiciary. A lot of people um, who've been following this case since, since when it happened, they're wondering, you know, where's the justice, not only for Daniel, but for his, his family as well and his parents at home and, and, and th those he's left behind, his loved ones. Do you believe that his parents even have a chance at overturning the court decision that freed their son's killers? Well, Emmett, the good news is that he's the, the, the four murderers, uh, have, terrorists, have been in jail since 2002. There have been several attempts by Pakistani courts to release them. This is not the first time. So you can see the judiciary has no interest in punishing them. Um, and that, yes, they have been ordered to release. Thankfully, the government still has them under detention. Let us also remember that there is a New Jersey grand jury indictment uh, in federal court for all four of them. They have an appointment with justice in an American courtroom for beheading an American Jewish journalist. I want to repeat that again. Cutting off heads and the sort of moral, the creepy moral and cultural relativism we still live under in a politically correct culture that simply says, well, you know, societies have different ways of resolving things. Uh, you know, Islamists like the cut off heads. And if you think I'm kidding, you should be on a campus one day because there are people who would probably agree, well, he's a Jewish journalist. He was, you know, he was kidnapped by Islamists. What do you expect to happen? Not mm -hmm. cutting off a head. That's what I expect not to happen. And that a, the, a country that we're about to give $25 million in foreign aid to has an obligation to do what's just for an American citizen. Well, you mentioned that this New Jersey uh, case, these lawyers here. Where, where also is the U.S. government? When could we see these men actually uh, being tried for the crimes they've committed? Emma, if I was in the U.S. Senate right now, after Danny Pearl was killers were released, I would say the $25 million isn't going anywhere until he, these four people are extradited to New Jersey. They're not going anywhere. You're, you're never going to receive a dime of, of foreign aid unless the four murderers who beheaded Danny Pearl are extradited to the United States with their date in a federal courthouse. Wow. Do okay. I think that's going to happen? Yeah, it's, no. it hasn't. It hasn't happened yet. Um, I don't would there be another will. opportunity besides threatening to withhold this aid uh, where we could see some justice here? 
Look, you know, there is there are some segments of Pakistani society, I and mean, it's important to know, that do believe that this is a blight on their country um, th and that there is a deep, profound amount of regret on what happened to... And again, this was clearly anti-Semitic motivated. His confession um, uh, uh, was that he was Jewish, his father was Jewish, his father was Israeli, and get this, that there is a street in Israel named for his great-grandfather. He was beheaded as a Jew, but an American citizen. So I do think that Pakistani officials are aware that the eyes of the world are watching them. Unfortunately, there are so many other eyes of the world that, again, have tacitly accepted the moral relativism of these, you know, medieval caliphate-related uh, 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 measures that only exist in one part of the world, that part. Well, we will see what happens. Again, it, it's been 18 years uh, since his death, and we're still following this case. And we appreciate you following along as well. Thane Rosenbaum taking the time joining us this morning. Thane, thank you. Thank you, Emma. You got it. Especially